Snapchat? Uh, <laughs> long time. Ten? Eleven? Uh, ten. I just, I, I was actually look. Oh, we are live, by the way. I've been looking into my um, my start date, and I, I can't find any concrete evidence for it. It's really frustrating. That's funny. Yeah, well, um... I was pl planning on going through some bank records to figure out what the first deposit or first paycheck was, but See. it's far back enough that I need to request statements for the individual months that want to <laughs> investigate. So it's like, eh, all right, I'll do this later. Whenever you build up a company big enough, you need what they call a fall guy. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> it's... This is the other foot landing, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's for the best. It's <laughs> for the best. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what everyone would have wanted. <laughs> oh, uh, you're not wrong, but it still hurts. <laughs> Right. my feelings <laughs> uh if you are watching this ahead of the live stream after the live stream not part of the live stream jump ahead 15 minutes uh to see the crkt home front compact as well as the crkt persian review first impression review those things both of yeah. them yeah if they were watching it before the stream that means they're like Time, time travelers, travelers? yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool we got we got to get in on that market <laughs> can i get it some time travelers in the chat that'd be awesome hell yeah sound off time travelers let's go uh no <laughs> <laughs> oh so um i like the dentist edited himself as a time traveler but doesn't want to comment in chat no no that's what I got took from it. I'm not even live in chat yet. It's fine. It's, hey, it's okay. Infinite, what is up? And by that I mean, or am I? Burr, burr, burr. Hey, look at that. There's that sweet, sweet, excellent connection. It's great. Excellent. Uh, I uh, know I have not gone first the last couple times. And I know I've had some like somewhat new gems to show off the last couple weeks. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll go first this week. I'll volunteer myself. Okay. To go first. Do it. But also still showing off a sweet little gem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So every once in a while, I uh, have an associate friend, you would call him, uh, that. Uh, comes across a knife for whatever reason they think is bad juju. And when bad juju knives come their way, for whatever reason, they don't feel good about owning them any longer. And so as long as they go to a good home, then he's happy and they're not just discarded or used for more bad juju knives. To I see. create more bad juju. So uh, this was actually recently a, a gift from a, a friend of mine. Um, it is a uh, cat's knives. Ketamusha. Oh, wild. Hmm. I don't know that I know anything about that knife. And I cleaned the hell out of it. There's a little speckling on the handle. And the screws are a hybrid between Torx and Phillips, depending on which head or which screw you're taking apart. Oh, and an Allen for the uh, pivot screw. Oh, interesting. So all sorts of fun times. Yeah. Huh. You know, I, I'm not 100% sure that I've seen this knife before. I It looks familiar. It has... It's got a little oh, moose weird. interaction in it. I like it. And cat's huh. knives, um, mainly known for their fixed blades. They did sell some axes at one point in time. Um, so they do have a handful of folders. And this one was <laughs> super weird rubber craton handle. XT80 for the steel. Super weird. Uh, their equivalent of a 440C. Probably in the same mix. And I haven't looked it up, but... <clears throat> I bet you in the same mix as an acuto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that could be Some, mm -hmm. yeah. something that we've looked at not too long. Anyway, yeah, so good times. This one, uh, cool little addition, and I cleaned it up, took it apart, polished some washers, put it back together again, thinking about swapping out some washers. But 
<clears throat> I don't think the uh, August engineering washers are the right ones that I want to swap them out with. So uh, uh, I might I see. look at something else. Anyway, yeah. I see. I see. That's a sweet okay. little score. Yeah. I got Fun questions test. for later. All right. It's um, it's all about bad juju. Get, right? Taka, get a, taka I'm curious. That one. Yeah. Uh, Paul, did you get anything uh, new for this week? No, I have not. Um, I'm more than happy to go next. Sure. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Um. So last week I got called out for having a Norseman that wasn't drop shotty enough. And uh, mm. I solved the, the problem live on stream. And during <laughs> stream, I took a photo off to the side here of my knife disassembled. This is that photo. Fantastic. That it is. I see. I see. Yeah. Because you don't see the insides of these things very much. No, it's almost so it's... like guys are scared to take them apart <clears throat> for some reason. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, good uh, shit. Uh, good times, good times. I can't yeah. help but notice that this one's not pink or purple lighting. It is not. This That's... was just, during stream, I didn't want to muck around. Yeah. Well, you know, next time make it black and white, right? I mean, so... it is purple lighting right now. <laughs> and holy crap, a Kyoto in XT80 is so similar. There you go. <laughs> uh, who makes it, out of curiosity? Uh, XT80? Yeah, which uh, which uh, foundry? Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, it is made by Katz. Uh, the maker of XT80 is Katz. Guys, really? In the, U, in the US. Hmm. What the shit? <laughs> no wonder Katz Apparently. knives are so goddamn expensive they're making their own steel. Apparently. They what the hell? <laughs> That's <laughs> worth the deep dive another time. Damn. Ben, ben, how are we doing, sir? What are you carrying tonight? Uh, same with Infinite. He's going to play second fiddle. So is he carrying his first fiddle as his EDC? Between his teeth, yes. Oh, okay. Like a pirate. It's hard. It's ER. hard to play the devil went down to Georgia in your teeth. I mean, it's, it's twangier. Yeah, just get a mouth harp. It's fine. Then you're just Peter Frampton. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Hard to deny, though, the fact that mouth harps are twangy. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Just like Peter Frampton. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> um, I like the fact that uh, uh, Grimsmo uses a double stop pin. So, do you know why that's done? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the fact that it separates, that's awesome. It, it separates the opening and closing. They're separate operations that you can fine tune. That is exactly why they do it. Oh, so it changes the lockup position with the uh, the detent ball in the hole, and it changes the uh, the open position so that the jimping lines up properly on the spine. Um, nice. They have different size pins that they can insert to. Uh, to accommodate those tasks, which is nice when you make all your own stuff in-house and you can make decisions like that based on, hey, we have these precision-made pins that we made. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure they're making those ones. I, as uh, far as I know, they make everything. Yeah. I uh, was going to guess that they're secretly just a fan of croquet. A fan and it of makes croquet. them giggle every time they have two of them next to each other and they just want to put their foot on one and just pound it. <laughs> Terrible. I do like the fact too that they're different size pins in my in my knife. Yes, they are they're, definitively different. I think there is a reason for that, and I, to be honest, I couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> it's been so long since I watched their uh, the knife making Tuesday episode that would have talked about it. That's fair. Do you know what the the cutout in the side is underneath um, RWL thirty four? Yeah, that's the detent hole. Is it? Okay. Yep. You can actually see the detent track uh, very shiny in your photo here. 
give you a second oh, yeah. to see it. Yeah. Yeah, it's um yeah, that is also precision milled so that it has just the the the, the, the perfect amount of crispness when you go to go to open it. Very really nice. over engineered uh folding pocket knife and I, I say that with nothing but admiration. Uh, <laughs> They've done a good job of taking it to the nth degree, for sure. Just crazy bullshit, proudly made in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. In June Stinson. 2022. How are we doing? What are you carrying, sir, other than a Grimsmo? Because this guy's a spoiled nerd. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Damn, Are we Joe? all spoiled nerds Joe, a little bit? Speaking of spoiled nerds, what are you carrying? Oh. <laughs> well, definitely nerd. Uh, kind of spoiled in this case. Uh, finally got one in Interstellar from Kershaw. <laughs> uh, I thought this is the direction you were going. Oh, yeah, it's so good. One hundred percent. This is definitely a marked step down from a from a cat's knife, but maybe a step up from a from a Norseman. Uh, no, <laughs> obviously, oh. obviously, obviously, I kid. Um, yeah, I waited a really long time for this stupid thing. We finally got them at Cutting Edge, and. Uh, had to pull the trigger because I have the baby brother and because I liked it so much I wanted something a little bit more utilitarian even if that meant going with something uber tactical with a half serration or third serrations and chisel ground tonto just like Emerson intended um, hey just yeah. because you got a rebranded de-assisted manual OTF from Smith & Wesson doesn't mean well, you say Smith there's and anything Wesson. to be ashamed about. Oh, dude, I still have a busted uh, Shrade-assisted OTF that uh, is also a Tonto. <laughs> very, nice. very silly. I was dabbling when I was making the burn. I was dabbling on whether I was going to say Shrade or Smith & Wesson. <laughs> and the better bird was Smith and Wesson. <laughs> and it's funny because then you own the Shrade. I <laughs> so, may or may not own diff multiple different versions of that knife from Shrade. Here, here we are. Joe Ball burning circle. himself. Oh my <laughs> to be fair, I almost bought one myself. Yeah, yeah. They're fun. They're the Shrade manual OTF? No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no. The Shrade. See, At the if, time, I wanted if, to get one. If Shrade was doing out the fronts these days, they'd probably be at least using D2. Just saying. Yeah. The build quality would be the same, but D2. Can you, can you imagine an old timer themed out the front? <laughs> Like pack of wood handles, yes, like Barlow. nickel silver, Barlow, just like it. Joe, a Barlow, Barlow OTF, Barlow yeah. OTF. Why? Yeah. Why right. did you make me want a thing so badly so quickly? <laughs> uh, well, we could talk later. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's my. Can my you make it a swayback? Because then, it, like the handle and the blade, like would follow itself, so, right? Like, like it's. I've thought about how you would do like a curved manual up the front. <laughs> It doesn't seem worth the headache. <laughs> I know. Um, it was a Microtech or Heretic or somebody did a curved out the front. The, the uh, banana. Switchblade? Yeah, the thing was weird. Very yeah. cool, but very weird. Dick Richards, how we doing? What are you carrying? Um, so, broke down... I want to say maybe about nine cardboard boxes into... Six inch by six inch squares, give or take. Some bigger, some smaller. Yeah. Anyway, okay. with bag oh. I got a minute or two cool. to kill here before seven thirty. So bag yeah. of basic. Blah blah blah. Um, significant, significantly more edge rolling than my Chris Reeve S forty five. Like to the point where I can't strop it back. I am now putting it on a stone to fix it and going to really put it interesting. Unroll so, maybe and clean it up, and that might be all it takes. This is, but as of right now, factory edge, right? Factory Viper knives, Italian made. And how hard or soft is it, or do we know? No, sir. Okay, but I do know that that edge be who. Extra rolly for what okay. I did. Yeah. Uh, now, I did also put it in and out of the Kydex sheath, 
while I was doing those things, so there might be some Kydex Rolly. Hmm. Have you had that experience with Kydex very much? No. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Securex, I've dropped my yes, knives from all, near dull yeah. on Securex and actually kind of sharpened it. So yeah, Kydex doesn't really have a lot of glass infill, if any, I think. So I will keep you gentlemen in the loop as this progresses, but as of right now... Please do. I'm curious as to whether... crazy impressed with yeah. uh, the Magnus. I would guess one huh. of three things happened. Either the edge is damaged, i.e. burned slightly from factory and being softer than it should be. Or yeah. the steel was run softer, being that it's a fixed blade, um, than you would otherwise want. Or Dennis was being very silly with his knife, but I don't think it's likely. That last option is not very likely. It's cutting I'm cardboard. <laughs> cutting down into a box that's actually made. So I'm cutting down okay. onto a box that's like the bottom of a box suspended you're... with air and then another yeah. layer of cardboard underneath it. So you're so, cutting cardboard or air, basically, at that point. Yeah. Like, and very conscious of where staples are. I didn't actually see that many staples this time around compared to the last go with my Sabenza or my Dragonfly with K390 that I broke down a handful of the other day and it was just zipping through and it's still going like Skittles. But, uh, like Skittles. Yeah. I like that. Uh -huh. good <laughs> shit. Taste the rainbow, sir. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. At least there was a sir instead of a motherfucker. <laughs> Taste the rainbow, uh, motherfucker. Yeah, bitches. It should be bitches for the record. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more accurate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. I uh, had to kill it a minute or two. We've now killed more than that, uh, talking about the Magna Cut. But some reflection because I hadn't hard used that knife until today, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I'm surprised by that in my experience with it. Well, Viper knives, fixed mm -hmm. blade. We'll see. Still see some significantly rolling on the one side, so we'll clean that up and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Without going too far down that rabbit hole, there is an ongoing conversation on toughness versus edge retention and edge stability, as far as where is the point of diminishing returns. You get roughly a 10 to 12 percent increase in edge holding by going from 62 to 64 Rockwell with Magna Cut, but you lose a bunch of toughness. Um, well, a bunch, a, a proportionately larger amount. But the ongoing discussion has been whether the increase in edge stability is worth it, and uh, we might be seeing the answer to that tonight with uh, with Dennis's knife here. I haven't pushed edge stability. This is out of the box, but that was something that I kind of wanted, was hoping for at least, was mm -hmm. that we could push some edge stability. Well, what I mean is to, at higher hardnesses, Magnacut should be more stable. Yes. Like, it, sh it shouldn't deform, it shouldn't roll at a 64 compared to a 63, 62. Okay, um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the one potential downside of going with a lower toughness for fixed blade. It's, yeah. Even on that on that score, I think it might be a burnt edge because my the Skaha is not crazy high hardness. No, but we don't know necessarily what the lion steel is. Or sorry, right, exactly. Viper. Yeah. You get lion steel's name out your mouth. But you get because <laughs> then we these... know it would be soft, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. They would just say it's fifty-seven. It'd be like bitch slap you with a middle finger afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, this the skull has I think sixty-two, something like that. Sixty-two, sixty-three, or sixty-one, sixty-two. Which I thought, I I'm thought more was, than happy with. I thought sixty-two was the uh, was the was the base for them, but I could be. I will 62, 63, let but... you gentlemen know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah we are. I'm very words. curious to see how yeah, that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely anyway. in the weeds. Yeah. <laughs> some, some reflection on Magna Cut, but... <clears throat> yeah. That's not why we're here. Uh, we're here, you say, for some CRKTs. Some that we've been backburnering for a while. Full admit. Full admit. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of them we probably tried to swing at you a couple weeks ago and had some connection problems, so we we didn't swing nothing at you. No, nah, they don't know nothing no. about that. No, there's nothing to see here. Yeah, it's, it's a conspiracy theory uh, made up by chat. That's uh, <laughs> am I chat? Is it like Chad except with a T? It's, it's... Mm, I hope not. Nice shot, by the way. Whoever took this. 
It's all right. It's all right. Thanks. Um, so <laughs> CRKT Homefront Compact, CRKT Persian. Yes. Yes. Um, where Persian. do we want to start? Persian. Persian. Did I spell Persian wrong? Persian. <laughs> no, no, I think we're good. Uh, it's pronounced Persian. Fine, fine. We'll do the Persian first. No, uh, so I'm just being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you made your point. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did get some size comparison photos this time. Uh, oh, you're going to show them and everything? Like maybe in hand? Comparisons oh yeah, as well as like drag I got, I got, I got some in hand stuff. Yeah, I actually, not just I, like close ups of the pivot. Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. I remember. I remember. Uh, Dragonfly completely irrelevant size comparison. Actually, for the home front compact, it is actually a pretty, but for the Persian, hmm, less so. Less so. <sighs> Do you have any other size comparisons? Maybe in your hand. So, Not a size comparison to a knife in my hand, but uh, I certainly have one in hand here. You put two knives in your hand for a that'd size be, comparison? That'd we be great, but no. Start doing that. <laughs> here is another size comparison and just like have another random knife with your... Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, uh, so full-fledged. Full-fledged knife a -roonies. Yeah. Um, it is not a small knife. It is not a terribly small knife at all. If you'd like some uh, overall specs, I got them. I got Please some. do. Please do. 3.44 blade inch, overall of 8.13, weight of 3.1 ounces, blade thickness is 3.3 mil. Thack. Uh, <laughs> she D2 uh, assisted IKBS uh, FRN handle. What is it? Glass reinforced nylon handle. You yep. don't say FRN. Get that word out your mouth, too. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, it's not I fiberglass, it's beaded, it's beaded glass. I don't know. IKBS with an assisted. I got that. Um, I got that right yep. hand only clip. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> you heard me all. You heard yep. me all. Richard feel, Rogers. How dare you, sir? Feel Carry like... it dangerous. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, is. Let me know how that worked out for you with your. Um... Ivy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, works. it works great. Give it a go. Give it oh, a yes. Go. Especially with a dangerous. ring assisted knife like this. Yeah, holy yep. shit. Um, and for those curious, this is not the type of spring assist that you can disable. Uh, if you remove the spring, you lose your detent. Yeah, this is a continuation of a trend that I hate, where there is no mm -hmm. hole for the detent ball, so it just... Uh, yeah, you, you need that spring in there if you want to carry it safely. Well, sometimes it's got to be up in there. Up in there. Up in there. You know. Speaking of up in there going to go back to a previous photo just to take a closer look at that texturing. Insert. Yeah. Texture like you give a shit. Come on. It's, this mm -hmm. is great. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, I, I appreciate you bringing it up. Yeah. If dimple. you're going to do a plastic handle. Yeah. Do it like this. You might as well dimple and checker it. Mm -hmm. And not just make it plastic like a CEO and like put fake swirlies into it. Never mind. I'm, I'm going to throw Spyderco under the bus a little bit. Uh, flat pack fucking handles. Bi directional, man. Yeah, it's super you grippy. 3D. I want it. Yeah, I want that curvature. I, damn it. I was at my parents' place again today. I should have grabbed my native 3D while I was there. Uh, that had some contouring to it that was super comfy. But anyway, yeah, the injection molding is decent. Um, the texture came through pretty nice. There was one bit of a miss though on the back end of course it's always on the back end you mm -hmm. can see that uh that spacer is We're really heavy. not flush not flush at all with the sides of that profile yeah kind of awful man. um and normally i wouldn't give a shit i mean it's, it doesn't really affect the function no no not particularly but retail on this knife is high enough that i kind of expect it to be better than this if it's injection molded, it should be able to be perfect, too. Well, yes and no. I mean, there's different shrinkage rates for the size of the injection molding process, but you can also build it into your design. You could, That's theoretically, I mean. you could design it so that, okay, we're going to expect a millimeter clearance from the inside. We're, we're going to have the molding actually chamfered so that, well, one, it'd be easier to take out of the mold, but whatever. 
but two, that way it, it's at least there's a bit of a gap. You know how like the Gale Bradley two from Spyderco has the shadow box liners and the handle scales. Yeah. If anything's slightly off, like a quarter mil, half a mil, like you would probably notice if it was flush, not flush. But because yeah. it's shadow box, if it is off that quarter to half a mil, you'll never, you would never clock it. That's um, what I was gonna say. Is you should either yeah. have a step down or a step up with your backspacer just to avoid it, or do better. Yeah, <laughs> quit fucking around, really. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. um, but it does stand out because there's really only three sections to this handle outside of the liner, that being the two scales and the backspacer, and uh, it stands out. It stands out. The texture is hey, nice. It was but... good enough for a plastic Semenza. It's good enough for a Persian. Okay. I still kind of wish I had one of those plastic Semenzas, though. And did they have a full backspacer or did they have standoffs? Oh, I don't even know. So I but whatever it was, that. this would have been good enough for that. <laughs> and that's why they never greenlit the project. <laughs> they saw the prototypes, like, no thanks. Mr. Rogers, on the other hand, he's like, why won't you be my neighbor? And uh, yeah, got that made. Got that made. Yeah, yeah, he sure did. Uh, I'll say actiony, pretty actiony. Mm -hmm. With this IKBS and the assisted together, I mean, uh, yeah, as long as you can keep the price point reasonable, Flavio gets his cut, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, D2 definitely comes at a bit of a premium with CRKT in some cases. There are exceptions yeah. to that rule. This one's not too bad. Granted, it is still polymer handles, but it even so, it's not that bad. Yeah. I'm just I'm comparing it in my head to the uh, Squid XM, mm -hmm. and uh, arguably more work done to the blade. Well, I, you know what? Yes. I even ha I even hesitate as I say that. Like there's a there's more chaffering here because of the swedge, um, the pocketing. I I think these might be pocketed bearings. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but then then again, thinking about the hollow grind they had to do on the Squid XM, it's like that's not exactly very e like super easy to do with tool steel anyway so and eh, i don't know i don't know necessarily who deserves more points for that but i will well, say the blade symmetry was actually pretty decent on this knife yeah so there was at least that amount of effort gone i mean 3.3 mils though damn <laughs> yeah it's uh it's a fillet knife it's fine it's a boning knife yeah it looks it looks a bit like a japanese boning knife yeah it's thick cakes that's what's yeah. going on there that's yeah um yeah speaking of weight 3.1 ounce so that's nice. heavy not terribly chonky heavier than an aluminum bel air uh one we reviewed this, last week was 2.9 right just slightly yeah. heavier than a bailout too because a bailout's i think exactly three in aluminum uh-huh 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 with a better sure. size comparison because the bell there is small right yeah so yeah yeah bell air is only a three inch blade versus a yeah a not three inch blade I, mentioned i really do like the aesthetics of this knife it looks good overall jeb so, encrusted it or not well i mean <laughs> yeah. someone's got to take over where the hisatsu left off right mm -hmm. so uh, I don't have my Hisatsu here. It's in the drawer. Look, <laughs> somebody's got to make one because uh, I need to buy them. I mean, the fixed bladed yeah. clever girl didn't do it, and the ritual like overdid it. So <laughs> like, mm. it's... this is a nice middle ground. <laughs> this is this is uh, better than the ritual. Look, I will... <laughs> the ritual's name is very very on point. Speaking of being on point, uh, this knife doesn't have a point that comes too far up for me to feel like it would be annoying to use for EDC tasks. Uh, the Ritual was definitely one of those knives where it's like, nah, you just you don't plan on using this tip for anything. It, you get to use it if you get to use it, but really, no, you're not <laughs> you're not supposed to. This knife, it feels like you actually could puncture into stuff pretty easily and not have to worry about it too much. The Rituals for uh, ship to ship combat. On the seven seas. I'm just gonna bring up a picture of the CRKT ritual just in case you're somehow not familiar, whoever's watching. Indeed. Also, there's some fancier versions available now, which are kinda cool, but uh this is the one we're referencing, the original. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's mildly penisy. 
the handle's mildly penisy for sure, for sure. Uh, Dennis, you mentioned a little chunky blade stock thickness. Uh, I mean, I know the Sabenz is hollow ground, but it also is a three millimeter blade stock thickness. Not a three point three, but it's a three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but so is I a, mean, so is yeah. the native. So is it a matter of uh, perception of this knife? Like, does it really feel chunky in your hand when you're uh, no, when you're it? no? I actually just read I read the specs, and I, anything over three catches my eye nowadays. Mm. That's Sorry, kind of yeah. my standard. And on a folder, anything over three is like, oh, what you doing? <laughs> <laughs> why, why you why you going there? That's fair. You That's can, fair. You can do two nowadays, and some people do do the stock thickness on two. And yeah, you exactly. Right? It's like it's, yeah, yeah. I any I, plethora I, in between. Yeah, my my personal preference actually is for about a three millimeter blade stock, uh, like a one eighth, somewhere around there. Um, I don't mind a thinner blade, but I I tend to like the the, the feeling of solidity with a blade that thick. I I don't know. the aesthetic on it. Uh, I do like I don't know what this is. I don't have my calipers nearby, but the, the Grim Norseman's yeah. not uh, thin, not thick, but a quick googling shows me point one nine inches. Well, that's meaningless to me. Uh, yeah, that's less than meaningless. That can't be right. Four point eight two six. Yeah, no. Whatever. <laughs> whoever provided that number. Absolutely incorrect. Looks like a pants killer. Really? Because it's plastic rather than G10. I don't think this is gonna rip up your pants. Yeah, it, pretty soft. I mean, it would have been nice if they had l included a landing pad. Oh, hey, there's a little white hair. Oh, there. fantastic. Oh, I see. He's talking about the ritual. I apologize. Oh, the ritual. No, the ritual is absolutely not a pants killer. Uh, thanks to the micarta handles. Yeah. Very smooth paper micarta handles. Um, but I will I will actually kind of double down on that point, though. I do wish that they had taken a page out of Spartaco's handbook and uh, included a landing pad for their... Nice. Uh, especially if, if they're not going to give you a left-hand carry or a, a tip-down carry option anyway. It's like, eh, you could you could have included just a, a spot in the molding since it, it's never going to be used for anything else. Um, I do like the fact that they put a deep carry on it. Yes, <laughs> The clip's almost right. Well, yeah, you could have put it on the other side. Well, <laughs> could you? You could have. You could they, have made it not a spatula. They swept it. Yeah, they swept it out, and then they swept it like up. Like it's. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's a wide ass clip. It's a ski jump. Um, I no, could flip burgers with it. It's a landing zone. You got to get it wider for. Mm. Uh, yes. For when you're flipping burgers on the grill, I get it. Yeah. And a Grimsmo is. Uh, about a one eighth as well. Okay. Yeah. Some hater on the internet was just giving out false info, huh? Uh, apparently, yeah. Four point eight. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I'm like, that's like the that's like the OG um Adamas from Benchmade. It's like yeah. that was a thick piece of steel, sure, but damn. Like I said, Grimsmo decided they wanted to do an extra thick version of the Norseman. Uh, I'm sure people would buy it. Um, Go one centimeter. God damn, yeah. <laughs> uh what was that picture of? Ah, the liner. That's right. Um, black skeleton steel liners. Eyes. Skeleton eyes. Yeah. No, no skeletonized. I even threw a paper towel there to get some contrast in the back, but there's no skeletonization there. Um, just full steel liners in either side. It's a conk. It's a Paint, conk. Painted black or something. You know, this knife probably could have been, what, like a half ounce lighter at most if they had really heavily skeletonized it. Does it need to be two and a half ounces, though? No, and I think that may have led to a feeling of cheapness with this knife, given that the handles already were plastic. It would have made it blade heavy, too, which is not my favorite balance on a knife, necessarily. Yeah, that's fair. Depends on the knife. You know, for a knife this small, you know, yeah. I mean, relatively speaking, I like my Trailmaster to be a little blade heavy, you know, but well, well certain use cases, you know, yeah. Um, I didn't notice any particular discomfort with the inside corners of these ridges. That is one complaint I will often have with injection molded handles is that they're they're left a little sharp. 
like on the interior. Oh, I'll use sure this event as a pointer. The interior eh, corners of these handles can sometimes be left a little sharp, so that when you squeeze them, it sort of bites back in a really uncomfy way. Um, yep. Easy problem to solve if you have a tiny knife. You could just run your edge around those and kind of chamfer them yourself. But really, should you have to do that? Uh, I didn't notice that to be an issue with this knife. Uh, no, I didn't notice the squeezy, and I have on other knives before. Uh, what was that stupid knife called? Deadbolt assisted, double oh. finger choil, stupid, deadbolty stupidness. The assisted well, aluminum one. No, it was a G10 handle and had like really mm. sharp double oh. choil. Um, the anyway, that the one also like? pinched. That, yeah, that, that sounds one. right. Yeah, that sounds right. It we was talked about that one forever knife. ago. No, but that one was like a like a mistake in the milling almost, but. They but it pinched. It. it pinched on the inside like crazy. It did, yes. Was... Is that like a glitch in the Matrix? A mistake <laughs> in the milling? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a good way to mark it. Uh, the next fuck up, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not my fault. It's Keanu Reeves's. It's... There you go. He'd probably just roll with it too. That guy's way too cool. God yeah. damn you, Keanu. He's cool as shit. Anyway. <laughs> Indeed. Um, <laughs> Persian. <laughs> that asshole. That cool asshole. Yeah, um, cool, suave motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. The, um, once again, just highlighting the fact in this photo here that these handle scales are not flat packed all the way on the side. They actually do have a gentle curve all the way through. It's pretty comfy in hand. Um, if you are going to do polymer handles this is definitely how you should do it also the flats of this knife are very lightly chamfered which is a step that a lot of companies can miss um mm -hmm. it's not really necessary but it is a nice touch on a knife like this so i know that we're talking about the pros and cons and the good things about this knife and the contouring and the milling and the blah, 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 and the IKBS and the assist and blah, blah, blah. But amongst all of that, do we think this knife is worth the price for a plastic handled D2 knife? So... Uh, MSRP on their website is 60 US, which is pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. But Lately, CRKT has not really been going straight conversion to CAD, and they've been including, I don't know, import tax or polar bear tax or I don't know, something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this becomes an over $100 knife on the polar bear tax, right? Is it over? I thought it was right at. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. but if, even if so, you're right. It is still kind of a high price point. Especially what is the, the conversion computing. on 60 uh, here. We'll 90 up. something. Okay. Yeah, we're looking at, uh, oh no, 60 USD to CAD would be $81. Oh, it's 24 oh. cents. Ouch. Yeah, so that, that sucks. That's um, a great price for it. <laughs> actually, yeah, okay, well, so if, if we were, yeah. we were going to say on straight conversion, $80 for FRN handles, spring assist, ball bearings, D2, CRKT, with all the impl implicit warranty and design chops behind it, eh, yeah, I, mean, I think it's still a good knife at a hundred dollars. Don't get me wrong, but it, yes, at eighty yeah. bucks, it's an awesome. But it's uh, good yeah. knife at a hundred dollars, like a Delica or an Endura is a good knife at a hundred dollars. And you got to add an extra twenty to them. Is well, give or take, yeah, yeah twenty or thirty, depending yeah. on. Yeah, mm. check local listing because sometimes promos happen. You know, indeed. Yeah. Sometimes absolutely. native chief lightweights don't sell. So, <laughs> yeah, hint, hint. Um. Anyway. Yeah. To your point. Oh, sorry. Go for it. No, I got none. <laughs> uh, to your point. Yeah, I agree. Um, but especially when you're looking at the competition, like you look at what else you can get, especially in Canada for uh, D two. And like not even thinking about handle material because, hey, there's a lot of G10 and Micarta options out there from companies like uh, Civivi and QSP. Um, you can absolutely have that um, for a lot cheaper. I don't know that they're necessarily as interesting 
So how much are you willing to pay for design? That's for me that that's kind of where it comes down to. Are you willing to support cuz this like you said this is a Richard Rogers design? Yeah. Do you want to support him and his design work? Do you want to support CRKT with the type of uh custom to production conversion that they do? Well, and Flavio with the IKBS and uh yeah. yeah. Um I would say probably yes. No. If I'm I will say that as a collector if I'm looking at something like this compared to your average CVV or QSP, I would be more interested in the CRKT. And it's not because it says CRKT on it, it's because of all the other aspects that do go into it. That Flavio had a hand in it, that Richard Rogers had a hand in it. The fact that it visually it just looks more interesting, it has more going on, there's been more done uh, in terms of design work to the blade than a lot of the other options out there. But um, is it that much more different of design work than the walrus that we reviews i would argue i would argue yes i would argue yes they Um, they are similar knives but i think aesthetically the rogers is denser (laughs) the persian i agree i agree yeah but yeah is it that different it does well and that's just it and are these minute differences worth buying if you're looking for a functional tool i mean we've 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 touched on this on the channel so many times but it's definitely a case-by-case basis whether it's going to be worth it to you i don't think that this is going to be a better cutter than any other like actually you know what the walrus is a perfect example because it's uh significantly cheaper i believe um well 25 bucks cheaper something like that yeah, yeah. That, that that's still not like if you're if you're interested in buying knives in that price range and that's kind of towards the top of your budget that is a pretty decent uh cost savings there you do get quote-unquote higher end materials for the blade ha- or for for the handle material uh even if the blades are the same um yeah the walrus is going to be a better cutter with that full flat grind yeah yeah you're probably better off going with the qsp but this is a total top gear situation where it's like all of the positives are on this car right here, but I like this one. Yeah. 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 For sure. And that is a good kind of analogy to it. Um, And even this guy, like you talk about the spring assist is probably the one thing compared to a walrus that this does have on top of it. But then earlier in the conversation, you talk about not being able to take a detent out. <laughs> You're being like, yeah. if I want to not make this assisted, I can well then buy a, buy a walrus. It's yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's it's nice when you can. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's it, it is two separate conversations, but yeah. they're affiliated conversations. Yeah. yeah. For, for me, I would be much more inclined to buy this knife if I could de-assist it myself. And I think that is a matter of personal taste as well. I know that assisted opening knives haven't been as popular in recent years, but I gotta say, when they're done well, and to be to be honest, the action on the Persian feels quite good, but when they're done well, they're, they're really nice. They're very effective. They're good at what they are. I have had a not insignificant number of people asking about them recently. For assisted right. stuff. There's a lot of misconception too. A lot of people think that they're illegal in Canada. That seems to be coming up a lot recently. Yeah, well, I'm not sure where the know. resurgence in that information is coming from, but it's yeah. definitely not accurate. Information always kind of seems to flow in a bit of a wave like that where... It's my rights. It's my rights, you see. <laughs> my rights and my freedoms. <laughs> my rights. <laughs> my freedom. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, are we just about done? Maybe. I think I think so. The only other thing I really wanted to say was, hey, look at that not pivot collar. <laughs> it's, it's nice. Um, the little uh, ring that they've carved into that uh, screw head is kind of a nice touch. Um, yeah. I was going to touch on that earlier, too. I like it. Yeah. Just something small, just to make it a little bit different than the average. Well, I mean, you could just turn it into an Allen key. That's that's the key, right? Like it's, yeah. There you go. Hmm. Japan's got it figured out. Not everyone's going to do like mini milling on it, okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just subtle, subtle flex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, this seems an appropriate knife to bring up when we're talking about CRKTs. That's, well, that seems like a fair comparison. Yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> There's definitely nothing else in your collection that would make way more sense to talk about. Fine. I'll, is this one better? Uh, slightly. I was like, yeah. <laughs> 
guy showing off Grismos is another guy stropping Magna Cat, and we're talking about plastic <laughs> handled CRKTs. Yeah. What about, the, no, what about this one? No bias at all. No. Joe, I mean, save us. You got the crossbones <laughs> over there somewhere. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I do, but the problem is that it's the M390 and titanium <laughs> crossbones. At save least me, the one Joe on hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have um, the shitty crossbones. I do. Don't it lie. actually It's in my junk drawer next to my Buck 110. It uh, may or may not have better action than the good one. Um, Not better action, but uh, certainly better lockup. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> may uh, or may not. <laughs> oh, I'll bitch about that knife again another day. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess, I mean, really, I think that's about all that really needs to be said about this knife. Um, I think, for the money, it's decent. It's not a blow-your-hair-back deal, but for what this knife is... It's very attractive. Would it have been more attractive with G10 handles? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I wouldn't have been willing to pay the 3D machining prices required. Uh, if... They could have made it into aluminum and bumped it by 20 or 30 bucks, and I would have been a lot more intrigued. Well, there's this knife. Well, yeah. So there is they, that knife. they make a shalottle with 4116, which is a much cheaper steel that is a lot easier to machine, polish, sharpen, all that. This does have G10 and Teflon instead of ball bearings. No spring assist. It does have this nice little, I'm not sure if it's cast or machined backspace, a uh, little skull crusher pommel backspacer thing. It, it's very cool. Conjured. I, it's a conjured backspacer. It is it conjured into existence, yes. I don't know why the symbol for conjured is this like money, but anyway. Um, <laughs> snappy jazz fingers. Yeah. <laughs> but like the, the, the T10 on this thing is excellent. Had they done Teflon and G10 on the Persian, I would be pretty tempted, honestly. Um, just keep the rest the same, assisted or no, whatever. Um, but this knife is 130 bucks, I th I believe, uh, Canadian, relative to the barely $100 that this is. If that knife was $140, I don't know that it would be as as compelling, you know? Yeah, I would probably be talking pretty bad at this point about it if it was that kind of price point. Like 40 or 50 bucks more expensive, because honestly, that's what it would take to get that knife. Uh, with G10 handles, with that, with like similar milling patterns to what is all on that handle now. Um, I think maybe that's where I skip G10 and go straight to aluminum, is because there probably isn't going to be that much of a difference between upgrading price so point from. It actually would have been kind of neat to see, like the Calbi that CRKT recently came out with. That's their uh, die cast aluminum handle work again, and. Interestingly, again, CRKT is one of the only companies who's using that die cast aluminum in a way that actually feels decent on execution. Can I be honest? Yeah. I'm not I'm not a fan of the die cast stuff. It is really slick, was the thing I yeah. was gonna yeah, gonna bring up. So maybe having done like a G ten inlay, like just a strip of flat G ten or contour G ten right at the top would have been a nice way to sort of get some traction on there. But at that point you're adding a bunch of extra milling and machine tie like no, again. I don't know that the solid aluminum would have been the answer. You remember the um, the Bonafides. Um, that was the one thing that kept coming up with people handling that knife. was like, wow, that's really slick. Like, even with the sort of yeah, subtle texture. Yeah, you have texture. to put some sort of coating over top of it to fix uh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's... yeah the, the texture is too rounded to be effective as texture. Yeah. Yeah, I wish there was a way they could leverage that technology in a better way, because it's... I like aluminum handles, but the only time that I've seen them done it... Seen them done it... Seen them do it particularly well was with the original crossbones. Um, and that was all 3D machined, as far as I'm aware, so... Yeah. Um, I do like the idea, though, of some G10. That would work. Yeah. Are we uh, grading this bad boy? Are we? Do we got more to say? Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm done. That's fair. Um, I don't know what I want to grade it, so y'all go first. Uh, uh, hmm. Yeah. So there. Yeah. Uh, I I can give I you a grade it one, one Jake Gyllenhaal because he this... was the lead actor in Prince of Persia. 
Oh, I was just going to say, this Prince of Persia has me rubbing a little sand from the corner of my eye. A little... <laughs> uh, but I was thinking of the video game. I, I forgot there was a... It's a movie? Prince of Persia? Is there, is there a movie? It was a movie? Did I you remember... turn that piece of shit into a video game? <laughs> I, don't, I actually don't know which came first or <laughs> no, any of that. very much yeah. the movie. And okay. then the huh. piece of crap video game. Are you sure? Maybe it was the other way around. Well, I remember they, Prince, Prince of Persia, Persia when we were kids. I remember a video game series, yeah. From holy crap, the kid, they're coming out with a game this year, Prince of Persia. What the hell? When did the old game come out? Uh, 1999 is apparently okay. Princess Prince of Persia 3D. Well, but was Prince of Persia Kindred. The movie Blades, was 2010. So Prince of Persia, no Prince of Persia. Apparently, a 2D version was in 1989. There you go. Sounds yeah, like time so okay. it was a long-running video game series. Apparently. Apparently still running. They Resident Evil'd it and then threw out some movies afterwards. <laughs> oh, all right, fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. One Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> all right. One Jake Gyllenhaal? And a little um, bit a little bit of ice. With a, a G. little eye crusty. Yeah. And a little eye crusty. Uh, no, gonna... with a with a, like a quarter of a thirty six percent because that's what it got on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> like just a sprinkling of thirty six percent. Like uh, like, would you like, like some more? Sprinkling? Guy comes out with like the salt and pepper grinder and like just gives you like thirty six percent. That's so specific. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it pre portioned out, but he would never tell you that. He's got it weighed in. <laughs> he's Grams got it down to the salt shaker. Yeah. He's got only, it down to the crank. Let's be honest. He doesn't only... <laughs> actually shake it. He just unscrews it and dumps that amount yeah. onto your plate. And then walks exactly. Away. <laughs> he had it pre-weighed into his his little shaker, but he's just making a big show of it as if as if he's gonna exactly do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a boring score of uh, seven out of ten. <laughs> That's a callback. Thank you. Because I can... that, yeah. is that your enthusiasm. It's not. Um, I it's, assumed it was. I would have given it an eight, but talking about price point and whatever else, it came down. I was flip flopping between a point and a half point, but I don't like giving out half points, so uh, it's a seven. It's good. You should buy it, but it's going to cost a little bit more than it probably should. Yeah, I feel like that's uh. <laughs> I feel like that's really indicative of Sierra Kitty's lineup, which brings me to our next knife. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> unfortunately, and I, I want to say like that's I'm pushing that on Sierra Kitty because they're setting their prices. Well, yeah. Well, and again, U.S. versus CAD yeah. might yeah, be you, a little biased. It's U.S. It is absolutely an eight. If you're in yeah. the in the states, buy it. If you're Canadian, uh, if you like the design, I think it's still worth it. Yeah. Uh, on to the home front for the what? T how many home fronts have they made? Is this the third time? The fourth time? So the original was with the field strip. The version that came out immediately following was the cheaper version with the field strip. Then they had a camel version. Then they had a camel version with a moose hunter blade. Yes. So then they had the titanium M three ninety limited. Oh, back back that train up. You're forgetting about the black half serrated tanto. Yes, I handle. did forget about that bullshit. Uh <laughs> At the same time, the Camel Moose Hunter, they came up with a tacked out end of a hunting yep. version to yep. appease that... both crowds. Um, so yeah. th was it then the Titanium? I think then the Titanium M390 then, exclusive. Then, then the assisted with the 12C Sandvik. And then they took... And that was without the field strip. Um, away they... your field strip. Yeah, was there any other versions between that and the compact? I don't think there was. No. So that's seven. Seven. All right. Seven. I, I, that, I think I know that where we my loosely, score is going. That we loosely, uh, that we loosely remember here. Um, the most recent of which, prior, did not have the field strip either. So that is uh, that is a thing. That is a thing. Seems like they've given up on the field strip. Well, it seems like they give up on a lot of technologies as soon as they come out with them. Um, it's kind of part and parcel with what they do, unfortunately. 
indeed. Uh, so compact. So straight up, I thought this thing was going to be a CRKT exclusive. There's so many things that, like, as soon as they talk about S35 and nice th materials, they're like, oh, yeah, it's an exclu exclusive. Now, exclusive might mean 25 retailers, but none of them are international, so go after yourself. Um, <laughs> so yep. this knife... I never thought we were going to play with it. I was full disclosure. I never thought we were going to see this knife. I thought it was going to be somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah, I was in that same boat. Be looking at it from Kansas, you know. <laughs> well, I refuse to go to Kansas. You're not in Kansas anymore. That's yeah, for sure. I hope not. Um, anymore? Was there a t was there such a time? I, not that not you know I hope of. Not. <laughs> that's Nothing what I'm I afraid of, of my guy <laughs> phrase it like that um, here's a couple in hand shots <laughs> this isn't a terribly large <laughs> knife one of these days we're just going to put a shot of someone just like blindfolded <laughs> hands duct tape, one three of us <laughs> like oh wait what was that for that features nothing to do with it. <laughs> Why don't I remember that? It's like, oh, don't worry about it. We'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just a little guy. It's just a little guy. Like, just a little, little guy. Action's good. Action's really good for something this small. Um, like, look at the little gun hammer. It, like, it's going to get you. It's going to hammer your guns. I hope not. <laughs> I really hope not. Um, I did these guns. These guns. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry for the bad angle. This is the only angle I have with the flipper tab exposed. Um, because of the round nature of that. Joe, you tab... should always be sorry for the bad angle. But... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll talk that one away for later. Uh... <laughs> Cry in my bed. <laughs> Yep. Tonight about that. Oh, <laughs> I am not crying right now. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that um, the crest of that circle for the uh for the flipper tab. Nice purchase point for good flipping action. Um, it does engage with your finger pretty good. There wasn't a very easy way for me to fail at flipping this thing. Um, oh, not assisted, not assisted. It's on ball bearings, but it is. Not hey, assisted. You know what I got? I got some specs. Ah, hey, huh? Specifications, you'll say. <laughs> this bad boy is S35 steel with a DLC coating. Uh, G10 handle with the black aluminum. Black aluminum bolster? Yeah, you bet it is. The blade length is 2.9 inches, just a hint under 3 inch. Uh, overall is 6.8. Weight is 3 ounces on the nose. Blade thickness is 2.39. There you go. With 4 mil. I think that's it. Uh, price point is 175 USD on their websites. Straight conversion to CAD is 236.92, which is just a little under what I believe regular shelf price is. So, um, yeah, I don't know why some knives at a CRKT are like, oh, go fuck yourself. You get to pay an extra 40, 50 bucks. And then other knives, it's like, eh, 10 more dollars and then we'll call it even. <laughs> It's a little, little silly, a little strange. Super awesome. Key of note on CRKT's website is that the accessory options that it gives you a lanyard hold for fob customization. Oh yeah. Sometimes you just want a fob on your knife, you know. Well, sometimes you want a custom fob. Maybe you should just fob off. Well, well at least they call it a fob instead of a lanyard. <laughs> That's can right. Can I? Can I have Daisy Fog? I yes, knife chucks, right? Well, eventually, <laughs> knife, knife chucku. We gotta work you. our way up to chucku. it. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, I'm gonna play knife rope dart to begin with. Hell yeah! When it's closed, so it's really just me hitting you in the forehead with the butt end of a knife. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna quote one of my favorite movies here. <laughs> Who the hell is throwing handles? <laughs> Uh, go watch Kung Fu Hustle. It's a great movie. Uh, <laughs> good times, good times. Uh, so S thirty fives, you say? Yeah, on a home front, nice. you say? It's like they care occasionally. Um, 
<laughs> Paul doesn't seem convinced. All right. <laughs> okay. Why not, Paul? Why, why? It's not an exclusive, Paul. Come so, on. Take I, it while you I, can. Take I'm just. Cares. I was just making faces, really. Um, but I will say my one complaint with this knife is it feels like it was just shrank, shrank, shrunken, shrunk down in uh, CAD. Uh, the finger choil is a little small, in my opinion. So, I got some fat fingies. But even taking that into consideration, I do agree. This is going to fit really well in somebody with like small to medium small hands. But if you're wearing, if you have a medium sized hand or larger, it, it's going to, it that choil is going to feel a little bit restrictive. At least it gave me that impression. Um, yes, but it definitely, for me at least, it fits into like a mini griptilian size. It's just owning yeah. the fact that it's not going to be a four fingered grip. And it's small in a pocket for light EDC. You can go a little bit hard on it if you wanted to, but it's not something that I'm necessarily going to take yes. out. Like a full-fledged home front. Oh, no, I agree. I don't Did expect it like, to be yeah. hard use. I just can't really get my fingy in there to get proper grip on it without it kind of digging in at the back end of it. Yeah, it's. I think that's more just, like like you say, a design issue uh, with shrinking everything in relative proportion without actually going in and adjusting those curves just a little bit more. I, I suspect there wasn't a lot of that modification. It would only have needed to be changed a couple millimeters I think too. Just push it back ever so slightly. Or even well, rounding Paul, that curve. Paul, you can send more. them the schematics. It's fine. It's <laughs> Just send them to them and they'll like, listen. what's the issue? Here, I, heard knife Mr. Companies like Onion. That. Yeah. You know they do. Yeah, I've heard knife companies appreciate when you do that. Mm -hmm. I said, Mr. Onion. That being said, I am glad that they didn't do um, this sort of a handle shape where they just got rid of the choil altogether and just left it flat because then it kind of, I think it would have felt like it was missing. Um, yeah, but you could have, like you said, you could have like made that ridge it. more subtle. Yeah, just made it a little bit more approachable for you for your fingies. Yeah. Um, I did. And Onion doesn't picture. care about lefties once again. No, fine. no, it doesn't give a shit about you. Um, never has, never will. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, do better. There's some lockup pictures. Pretty solid. Uh, He's never gonna change, so maybe you should. Apparently. <laughs> How about we talk about a pocket clip that's really long? Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Like you were saying, something about Ken Onion never changing. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. Clip that's really long. You said, "Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ." Um, I I actually don't hate it. it. It didn't bother me in the hand, just aesthetically looking at it. It's like, eh, really? Yeah, that's... but if you try to flip an egg with that, you're gonna be sadly disappointed, man. It. It's just gonna go suck through the middle. It's no good. <laughs> Sucking eggs. Yeah, yeah, that's where the uh, okay. You know what? Another half point deducted from this knife and to the Persian because you can flip an egg with it. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> no weird egg egg falling. Breakfast nonsense. advantage goes to the Persian. It's yes. blueberry bagels. Yes. With bacon. Yes. And spicy mayonnaise. You lost me. Yeah. yeah. It's delicious. You're disgusting. Yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, and you don't eat nice breakfast either. It's it's Star Spangled Pivot. What are you talking about? <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Home Front Compact, you say? Um, yeah. Indeed. I do like the fact that they kept the star. It's not a home front without it. I feel like they would have had had to. But I am also, yes, I, I agree. I'm glad that I they did decide to keep it. Appreciate that they didn't go blingy on it. Mm-hmm. Agreed as well. Well, some sort of like standout made it copper to match the G10E or something like that. Uh, you know, you know the bullshit that they do. Yeah, that bullshit. well, they and by they, it. you mean Kershaw. But yeah, I agree. I agree. Like orange Sarah Dear Kirk. Mr. Onion. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Opening line. <laughs> 
Here are um, my schematics. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, would you have hated like a G10 pivot collar that was the same G10 as the uh, the rest of the grip? Is that G10? The what did you think it was? The handle? I don't know. I I thought it was a weird bicarda. Oh I yeah, think. I'm I'm fairly certain it's a peel ply. It peel is ply G10. this weird bicarda called G10. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Just that glass new... micarta. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fancy dude shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's how they get. We're to... gonna take some glass here. You see, here, stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, where are you going? <laughs> Please, <laughs> yeah, Please come back. <laughs> leaving. <laughs> Mr. Onion, my schematics. Mr. Onion, what about my schematics? <laughs> Oh, the phrase Mr. Onion my schematics is going to come up later. <laughs> <laughs> I want that on a t shirt. <laughs> you haven't even seen oh. my schematics. Oh my god. It's oh, so stupid. I, I love it. It's uh, so niche, no one would get it. No. Not even <laughs> Mr. Onion himself. I want you to know I'm actually making a note of this. <laughs> I want you to know I actually cried. I was laughing so hard. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yep. I want that in a t-shirt. Badly. Alright, and fucking saved and favorited. There we go. Um, <laughs> so, ranking a knife, so, you say. Right hand only. Suck it. Suck it hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, especially when like it's becoming pretty commonplace to have at least a filler tab, if not just a just a hole. And yes, the countersinking was actually pretty decent on this, but man, that screw, bro, in that pocket. Well, hey, I don't really, <laughs> I don't care <laughs> that much. Mostly because those butt heads. Neither screws. did they. Okay. <laughs> Neither did they. <laughs> You know what? I retract anything I was gonna say there. You know what? Yeah, you're right. They didn't give a shit. Oh, uh, but you it's know where they literally the... just Dude. the other screw from the body. It's fine. You, you know it where worked. they did give a shit though? <laughs> just wait for that photo to load up on your side, which should be did quick. They skeletonize the shit out of it. Oh, on the version. Yeah, yeah, but they actually did skeletonize the home front, didn't they? Um, and they that's... did skeletonize the version, did... so. Did they? Did did I take? Did I not? Oh, did I not take photos? I don't think I did. I didn't take photos of the inside. I don't know if it's Look, actually skeletonized. I'm just taking Dennis's word at this point. They're and, rounded domed screws in the rest of the body construction. And what were they going to do? Use a different screw? Well, they had to use a different screw something for else? the clip anyway. So yeah, they probably should have. Is but, it different? Uh, I think it is. I think it is. Maybe it's just longer. No I guess comment. it does make it arguably <sighs> make it uh, different, but at least it's not. Um, and I mean, granted, very few companies do stupid bullshit like this, but square-headed, yeah, screws. At least it's domed. It it shouldn't interfere with your pants that much. But eh, yeah, you're right. It would be nice if they were countersunk for two hundred and fifty dollars or whatever. They're two ten, two hundred nine, American. Uh, 175 Dennis? American? 175, oh, yeah. I see. Okay, Straken. for 175 still. still be, uh... The strike conversion would be 236.94. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But that's not the way the world works. Um, I am not seeing much skeletonizing. I found a couple pictures that have kind of some inside okay. the handle pictures. I don't know where they. Well, I mean, I guess the steel liners on the inside that you, you, you could. Yeah, that's but. what I thought, maybe, but from the looks of things. Hey, look, the backspacer looks nice, nice and lined up. Almost like they give a shit. No, you just can't tell because they are both above that, and below. That's <laughs> yeah. where I was going. Yeah. <laughs> proud. Purposefully proud. Uh, do we know the backspacer is made out of? Is, is it aluminum or steel? Or G tag. Backspacer? It's probably yeah. plastic. It looks like plastic. <laughs> that sucks. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it does look pretty smooth. I would be willing to bet that it's either steel or aluminum for that price, though. 
I don't know. Handle only, the trail only... G10 with aluminum Look. bolster. That's all it says. G10 okay. with aluminum bolster. Honestly, the only companies that I know of who routinely use plastic for backspacers are Benchmade and, uh, well, okay, Benchmade, Kershaw, ZT. There you go. Yeah. I thought you were going to just say Benchmade at first, and I was like, come on, man. <laughs> Well, in in that in this price range, like obviously Spyderco does it with their Japan models and a lot of their uh, the FRN lightweight stuff, but not all yeah. of it. So, true facts. Yeah, that lanyard hole kind of fucking sucks. I'm just mm -hmm. <laughs> gonna double back to that because it's just staring at me in the face. It's um, for fog customization. Okay, that's, that's fine, <sighs> but it could have been could have been chamfered. Like, come on, just fill it in. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, use a <laughs> just get a little uh, uh, copper rod, pin it exactly, pin it in, in place, file it flush. You know? I wonder if flush, you could do that with the gun hammer too, if they're the same sized hole. Ooh, mm -hmm. actually, having a little copper accent floating around in that hole wouldn't be bad. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, copper accent in your hole, especially. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that alone, especially yeah. with the DLC coating that they've got going. The contrast would be nice. He said copper accident it's uh it's disinfecting it's fine oh uh, so many things it's wrong. turning black sir <laughs> <laughs> sir that means it's wendy's. working <laughs> sir can you please put your hole away this is a wendy's yeah exactly uh yeah yeah um so it's not exclusive <laughs> so the reason I keep on flogging that dead horse is because yeah. even their exclusives are like you can barely get them and they're just as expensive as this if not more expensive and blah 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 type of thing right so I realized that 236 conversion give or take 250 blah 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 type of thing is, is what we're working with 175 American is not necessarily cheap and again looking at what else is out there in the price point might be a tough pill to swallow, but for Ken Onion fans, CRKT 250 is not zero tolerance prices. It's not so, bench made prices. It's not old yeah. brand prices. Mm -hmm. So what's a paramilitary or a para three going for these days? Yeah, two two fifty, two seventy five. Yeah, two fifty, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I think this is a decent option for the materials. Honestly, at this size, this the way prices have been going lately. But relatively speaking, that wasn't speaking, made on Spider at, on Spiderco way. No, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Or it's, was it? It's not that much more expensive than a plastic bug out, too. I was just really. gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so again, yeah. coming down to if people like it and brand recognition. And I talk about the old brands because the the QSPs and the Civivis and the Best Techs and the Sencuts and the Vosteeds and the whoever didn't exist a decade ago. So when you're talking about swinging with the old brands, yeah, they're not American made, but they still have the same brand recognition as the Kershaw's, as the Bucks, as the Zero Tolerances, as the Sputtercos, as the Benchmates, as the Gerbers, as the Songs, right? Like, I would argue I the worst... too. Oh, sorry, go for it. No, go ahead. Nope. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the biggest mistake they made is putting CRKT right on the blade the way they did when they've been doing a good job of removing that from most of their blades? I So they haven't outright removed it. I think it's just glaringly obvious because it's the black blade with the silver lettering. Like if you, But you are correct. If you, lo uh, if you look at the Persian, its lettering is a lot smaller than... And actually, the new versions of the Shalotl that are available have CRKT logos that are about half this size now. Yeah. yeah. So they are getting better at it. But I would say that if you're looking at it from a collector's standpoint and for the, like Dennis was saying, the brand recognition and all the people involved with making these products, I would say the compact is going to be more collectible than any best tech that's come out in the last five years, right? Oh, well, yeah, has easily. best tech even really been around that long, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's not like they're not collaborating with different people. 
But if you look at Civivi, look at QSP, it's like, um, yeah, they're good value options. They're decent knives. They're going to have a really big fan base. But I again, will the, say, though, yeah. I know of one best tech that probably is collector, and it's not this price point. It is significantly more expensive. One of the um, four to uh, four to five hundred dollar the, options they make. One of their Rogers designs, actually. The uh, see, that's Montosa. That's version the thing, that they did. though. Okay, so but that was never under the Best Tech brand, was it? No, no, made by them for like. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm specifically mid-tech. not counting the mid tech or oh like OEM Touché. options for that reason, but I do agree with Completely you 100. percent They are capable of making some extremely collectible high end shit, and they do all the time. It's they just, just don't have the brand recognition for it. They don't yeah. put it under their own brand for that yeah. price point. Yeah. Which they let other I, people put their brands on it for that price point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does um, do, do you know Kennedy makes a custom home front? Yeah, I'm sure. I want to see what a custom home front looks like. I was going to be a smart ass about uh, the CRKT logoing that you were talking about there, Paul. Mm-hmm. And CRKT is just like really scared because if they don't put CRKT on the logo, he's just going to put Mr. Onion on it instead. <laughs> like we got to keep we got to keep it. We got to keep his name off of it. It's our it's our real estate. I I'm waiting for the day that CRKT just comes out with a new brand logo and it's just a cricket that they can put on their knife. Just steer into it. Mhm. Mhm. I'm just looking through Ken Onion Customs at this point. Yeah, okay, yeah. so the, he, apparently it's called the Ken Onion Custom Military Flipper. So there is a custom version of the home front. It's just called the... Military Flipper. Yeah. Uh, I There's an XL. I don't know if there is a compact, at least not on this website. E-bomb. I'm pretty E-bomb sure the Tom's term flipper. Military Flipper is from too much scientific testing. <laughs> That's just... Uh, they okay. call it scientific. They call it scientific to make you feel better about it, but there's nothing it's scientific for science. about it. It's... Huh, that didn't kill him. <laughs> Let's mm. try it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really do think that for uh, the collector's market out there, this is a much more interesting proposition than a lot of what else is out there. Therefore, at, that pr- at this price point with these materials, I think it's a pretty cool knife. I think it's neat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could do worse. For more from reputable brands, easily. Yeah, the talking about the uh, the bug out the uh, the um, what's it called the uh, Paris three. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Reminded me, just or kind of set it in my mind, just how good of a value this knife actually is. Well, and you put I, it overseas I, and whatever, right? But I'm I'm shitting on it a little bit because of the. Uh, you know, it says CRKT on it, and I don't want to pay that for a CRKT, but that's just me being an asshole, really. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen the burn scars on my friends, and I don't want to take that plunge. That's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. But give me a Huron. I'll buy that. I'll make stupid choices about that thing. Huron. Oh, um, the Huron? Yes, the, the, the Huron. KT. Huron. Yes, 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 yes. That thing is mm. fucking yeah. wild and weird. Make that available cool. to all of us. I'll buy, I will buy the hell out of that knife. But no, <laughs> yeah. it's got to be an exclusive. Both times. Yeah, that's kind of a piss off, to be honest. But Oh, man, can you imagine if they did one with, like, aluminum handles, but with Sandvik, like, 12C? For like How dare you? For, like, 100, 120 bucks. Yeah, but I like, want that knife. No, 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 but, like, beer polished? The whole thing. <laughs> I'd okay, buy that. I do want that knife. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Can I have an expensive one too? Mm, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is CRKT. We've already we've already come to that. That's a bygone conclusion. The answer is that's uh, fair. Go. The answer is: Are you in the states? Uh, no. Uh, go fuck. Go fuck yourself. Um, I think. There's really only nitpicky shit about this knife to get upset over, unless you're left-handed. Um, <laughs> sorry. I think this is still a decent buy for most people. If you like smaller knives, you like flippers, you like Ken Onion, it's a great pick. I think you mm-hmm. should bring this one home. 
so keep it in your front pocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We also haven't dabbled on the name. I mean home front. I don't know if you're familiar with the term home front. It's I'm the, familiar, I think, with the movie and the video game once again. The war term of Well, it's the military flipper, you see. Yeah, yeah. it is. And the home front is the like civilian population that's on home country turf that's making things for the war, right? Right. So this knife is for used on the home front while people go to war. I see. For, see. So not for war itself. It's hmm. it's a compact war though. So for staying yeah, at home while say. other people go to war. I'm only compact, bro. I need to be to hold this knife. Yeah, you, you are I'm too tall just... to buy this knife. Yeah. yeah, I can't fit in the tank. He, yeah, apparently was too tall to ride that ride, so mm. he got to stay home. Can't and fit in the tanks. Melt down pieces of copper to put into his flipper tabs. It's for the greater good. It's... I'm not going to melt it down. I'm going to paint it in place. Oh, I see. That being it's... said, what about getting some copper into those folders? Just having little copper strips on both sides. Having. Yeah. Are you just making like oblong copper molds at that point? I don't think that copper stay in there. Oh no, I'm no, just... no! You'd have to do something. To... You'd have to like texture it or something. Yeah. Just drill holes all the way through. Yeah, that'd work. Yeah. I'm just gonna uh, take two copper wires and glue them to either side of the knife. It's <laughs> glue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like yeah, Elmer's right. too, Look, not even Joe, Joe Copper in the Fullers, just like you wanted. <laughs> oh, I might actually cry. <laughs> You're a monster. Uh, it's like when you give your doll a haircut and you're so so proud to show mom, right? Like it's yeah. I'm talking from Joe's childhood history. It's yeah. Did I have any dolls with hair? <laughs> not after you were done with them. <laughs> Smooth like a dolphin. <laughs> That's Sorry. how I like to play. That's how I like my dolls. <laughs> like Mr. Uh, Clean. Oh Everyone. yeah. That guy knew what was up. <laughs> I'd like to get off this ride. I ain't uh, <laughs> a very poor choice of words. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Awful. Fucking awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, so I think that concludes the reviews of the Sierra KTs. Uh, we did, Indeed. we did, we did pretty okay, pretty okay time on that. Um, stream looks like it held up okay. The quick yeah. check here. I was like on point. I could see things happening as they were happening. I never accidentally paused my own video, and then got annoyed when I wasn't up to speed. <laughs> Fucking bonus points, man! Nice. Uh, well, uh, anybody have any secondary topics or anything they want to, oh yeah, Dennis, how's the, uh, how's the edge repair? I want to hear. Oh, it's cleaned up pretty nice. I'm just dropping. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Not nice. bad. Stropping did clean it up? No, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Paul, you I, should. I was breaking out diamond stones halfway through this stream. It's, yeah. So I don't have anything in MagnaCut yet. Paul has a Skaha 2 in Magna mm -hmm. Cut. Dennis has the basic? Is that so what basic. It's a basic. Viper yeah. basic. Um, so, Paul, why don't you tell the audience your experience with Magna Cut so far? Because you've had that knife for a decent amount of time now. Yeah. It, I owned that knife from, like, early June last year is when it arrived, like the first week. And I've taken that knife camping with me. No, albeit it didn't get a lot of use camping. It's opening packages and stuff like that out there. It's not batoning things because no, but it's also like a two millimeter blade stock. <laughs> like absolutely, this is the S thirty five VN variant, and it is uh, yeah, it's a thin blade. But then it was an everyday pocket carry from June until December, and at Christmas time was where I was like. Hey Dennis, do you mind giving this thing a strop for me while uh, while you're sharpening stuff? 
and he stropped it up and he was like, mm, it's better, but at this point now, it's not, not fully quite coming back. It's, back. Not, yeah. it's not shaving sharp. And I took a Spiderco Whitestone and less than five minutes and I had it shaving sharp again. That's fucking excellent. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, so for... That's why I was making comments about, about the it not. I don't think it's soft by any st stretch, but it's on the softer side. It's not pushing the boundaries of how hard um, Magna Cut can go. So I feel like it's more likely a burnt edge on the basic or something like that. I don't know that they're running it at a 50 something. I know that you were probably given a little card that came with that told you the relative hardness of the blade steel. Mine, I, oh, you, you don't have to go anywhere. I have their website here. Um, my S35 VN variant, I believe, was 6162. I'm going to have to double check. But their Magna Cut, they're, they're saying it's a 60 to, oh, 60 to 62. Okay. I Which do remember is... being on the softer side of things. Yes. Um, for for a company that is selling their products as uh, mostly outdoor living type of situations, like a lot of the stuff is like fishing, fillet knives, they do some kitchen stuff. Um, and again, it, it Laren's said, depending on what you want your knife to do. It doesn't make sense for them to have a different heat treating for this one knife when everything else is being done that other way. So... Yeah. At at when I first found that out when I ordered the knife, I wasn't excited about that. But I was like, I'll oh, put it to the test and see how it goes. And I've been impressed. So yeah. Again, sixty sixty two is still a pretty hard range for most pocket knives for the entry level these days. Um and for something where, like you say, it took like Ten years little... ago people were scared to go over sixty. It's yeah. Yeah. I was I was actually gonna reference the Z D P one eighty nine in my uh, Cali 3, which Dennis also has, um, this is one of the knives I have where I can go those many months of just dropping, never really having to take it to a stone, never really having to think about uh, the edge retention side of things. But this thing is thicker behind the edge by a decent amount compared to the Skaha. So even at the relatively higher uh, Rockwell here, it, it just doesn't hold up in the same way that um, a thinner blade will. So I don't yeah. know that it's necessarily a con, but it's still interesting to hear that uh, it took that long to really well, see a degradation of performance. And to put it in perspective, using another knife in the higher like wear resistant steel, I've gotten a couple years out of like S90 yeah. in the past, which makes sense. It's not going to hold up to the abuse that Magna Cut is going to. Um 20 CV has given me a little bit longer edge retention, but again, doesn't have the toughness. So if you're looking for a knife steel that does everything pretty well, I still think Magna Cut's pretty cool, but mm -hmm. it's not the be all end all that I think people well, were originally thinking it was going to immediately take over every aspect of the knife community and yeah. nothing was going to be made that wasn't Magna Cut. And, and we're still in the middle of that, but sure. <laughs> uh, I will uh, put my edge on this and actually see if there's further testing involved. That's for sure. So yeah, yeah. please do because I want to hear more anecdotal points here. Um, yeah, like I said, my Sabenz S45 beat the shit out of the Magna Cut out of the factory, at least. Yeah, and having used S45 fairly hard as well, I've been super impressed by it. I would buy another knife and S45 any day of the week. And the Sebenza didn't go crazy hard on their S45 either when they did the run of them that were S45. But I do know that I did thin out the edge on this guy too. Yeah. Down to 15-ish degree, right? Yeah. So that... Well, and that's kind of in the realm of where I was playing with it with the uh, Meat Crafter too. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. Mm -hmm. That... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking again about the hollow grind that you get on a Sabenza and how yeah. little resistance you're going to get in actually cutting things. 
yeah, not not terribly shocked by those findings. Um, um, also, but Stropping, bringing it back, S45, yes. Strop much easier. I don't know what I did to roll this thing bad enough that I'm just putting a new edge on it. Again, I'm very curious. Very curious as to what the uh, what the situation is with that edge right now. Well, it's going to clean up by morning. That's for sure. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will leave you guys with. I don't think we've talked about it, but uh, new budget brand Iron Fly knives. Ironflyknives.com. All right. Yeah, that's the one. Bam. Where every cut matters, or something like that. I appreciate that tongue in cheek little approach. I, I I would like to see more pictures of your stuff, please. For international shipping. Zesties. VG10 and Micarta. Okay. What kind of price point these guys sitting at? Yeah. <laughs> that that's what I'm for, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh hey, fifty bucks. I find them, you reel them in. I don't know. Like it's seriously. Go. So what the hell is going on with their handles here? They have a wire clip. And is that a divot or a raised rib on the center line of that handle? That lo- okay, that that rib. looks yeah. Uh, it is 58 a... American? Yeah. It is a fuller. Yeah. No, it that is raised. Is it? Yeah, look at this. It hmm. looks like it from the side here. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, super, 100% it is. super fucking weird, dude. <laughs> I don't know. 58 American on White Mountain is okay. what I'm looking at. Yeah. Um, Directly on their website on sale for 50 bucks American, 59, 9, 59 normally. VG10, 4.2 ounces for how long of a blade? Six point, uh, 3.62? Okay. So, okay. That's a fair size knife. That's a, that's Endura sized, roughly. Which, for the record, it's pretty close to Sabenza size, I think. Um, I don't even know if they have any uh, other models other Sabenza. than a Zesty. I think this is the one that I saw, too. The oh. quick tab. I was like, oh. Weird it's the only, company. Yeah. Put in that. yeah. It's the only it's one I name. saw on their website. The Zesty. It is, yeah. Um, you call it a Zesty and then you go with like olive drab. You I could have made this thing lime green. The scaling on their website is super weird for web browsing, but. It's okay. because I yeah. sent you a virus. To... Oh, all right. <laughs> Compuades. Yeah, that sounds uh, how about the About Us page? Let's take a look. Oh, wow, that's a write-up. Okay. So, they've been around since 2020. A leading brand under the renowned Kunwu Knives Group. What the hell does that mean? There you go. Kunwu. Yeah, Kunwu. Kunwu's hmm. the guys who are making the Django and uh, so, the knife company that I'm all, like, gung-ho about. Okay, is there another... Chinese OEM company that sounds like starts with a K that's not Kunwu. Uh, what was that white handled knife that we had in the back room for a while? Was that a Kunwu? No, Kubi. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So Kunwu, so this is to Kunwu what Senkut is to Civivi or Civivi is to we sort of a child Something. company, yeah, a bit of a step down in terms of budget. What best tech man is to best tech, yeah, 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 sexist, but they've been around for four years now, and there's one yeah. model they've been around as long as Ken Wu has been around, interesting, and, have one and it ju- just never took off, maybe. I don't know. Now that's just, just do they like name a company and then just focus on Kun Wu at first? I think it could be the Kun Wu has been around since 2020. Kun yeah. Wu has yeah. Iron Fly yeah. only came around within the last whatever year or so. They say Iron Fly Knives established in 2020, so unless they registered the name at the same time they registered Kun Wu and then only that's just... what I'm. 
That's what I'm thinking they did, yeah. Yeah, which is a little... It's kind of weird to say that your company has a history of... Or at least this brand has a history of many years. Even a handful a of years without... Yeah, it's a weird flex. One that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But the knife... For one model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If they're making them all in the same factory, I can kind of understand. It's still disingenuous. What it should say is the yeah. Kundwu, like family of knives has been around since 2020 would be a more accurate statement to be like, at least one of us has been around since 2020. Interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, it, interesting knife, interesting story on the company for sure. Um, the thing that, that they went pre with the pre order the Zesty on Kickstarter on July 29th, 2020. Okay. There you go. Campaign so the Zesty launched already 30% 2020. Kickstarter so... trying to pass the mark on Kickstarter. There you go. August 2020. Pledge for your Zesty today. So they were making the Kickstarter knives for people, and now they're releasing them? Yeah. It's interesting to me that they're using the same hardness as uh, the Delica Endura with that 59 to 60. Yeah. Out of curiosity, Dennis, can you see how many backers there were for the Zesty on that on the Kickstarter? I'm not on the Kickstarter. I'm on their social media. Oh, Dick okay. Richards, have a good night. Hmm. We'll Take see care, you next man. week. Have a good night, Dick Richards. Um, so they also have another knife that apparently they kickstarted in November of 2023 called the YOLO. It's a very interesting. Looks like a bull mastiff with a button lock. YOLO knife is not turning up anything. Uh, how do I spell that? Y O L O. Yeah, yeah. Y O L O. Iron fly. YOLO. Not through the not through the search, but maybe. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, we're relaunching our budget brand, and the thing I hate most is the button lock causes challenge. What? Fourteen C twenty eight. Make a premium steel version. It looks like it's still being prototyped, but man, that. Oh, very weird. Okay. Okay, so that hasn't made it to Kickstarter yet. The only thing that had is the Zesty, at least according to the Googles. Well, if you're seeing. Oh, I'm seeing. Yeah. I don't hate so, it. Out of curiosity. So they were backed. Let's call that 142,000 HK. The equivalent of 25,000 Canadian dollars. Across how many backers? 357? So the average person gave them seventy dollars for the burlap style wire clip knife. They're zesty. Interesting. They were expecting more zest. Maybe. Maybe. Well, I mean, it's it, it's interesting. It doesn't necessarily look like a bad knife. It, it looks a little derivative, but it doesn't look like it's badly executed. It's an interesting choice to do this rib in the middle, because that means your base material has to be at least that height in order to machine down. So it, it's an interesting yeah. take. You just don't see that frequently. Um, something vaguely lion steel 
reminiscent with that pocket clip being held on by that hex bolt with a glass breaker on the end. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wire. Um, it's kind of funny too. They actually oh. mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wire clip. Is it um, right hand carry only? Even though it's an over the top. No, wire it, like that. Well, it no, looks like it, it has. Oh, no, it does. All the way through. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it it hooks in above the liners. It, it seems. Um. So it should be lefty compatible. Um, they do reference Spider-Co in here once. Gives him the old reach around, you know. T- giving Spider-Co a reach around, huh? Um, well, yeah, that's, that's why they only mentioned him once. They wanted to mention him more than once, but Spider-Co's like, dude, we're not dating. Fuck. Yeah, no kidding. But <laughs> um, yeah, Anyway, yeah, super interesting. Very odd that they just did the one knife and now they're kind of and they did that prototype post in November, and that was their last post. They haven't posted I, anything. I would assume, given the context clues here, that they are being made in the same factory as the Kun Wu. They probably realize that, hey, our Kun Wu shit is, like, blowing the fuck up, and we can't keep this stuff in stock, but we only have the production capacity for so much. What do we keep yeah. doing? They probably decided to stick with the M390, and, like, I know they're working with some other bowler stuff. The um, L Max, right? Yeah, 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 and all the titanium and axis lock goodness they've been fucking around with. Like they make some decent looking stuff. In other episodes here, we've actually taken a look at <laughs> at Dennis's instruction here. Some of the uh, some of their back catalog, and man, they make some cool looking shit. The Django yeah. in particular is like, yeah, that's that's hot. It's a spicy meatball. Um, or um, meatballoni, as it well, were. Uh, a spicy meat boy. <laughs> yeah, mm. something like that. Mm. Mm. Isn't Super Meat Boy like a pretty decent Keep waving game? that flag. Man. Sure is, Keep yeah. Keep waving that flag. Yeah. You know, I've, I've played other games that have referenced Super Meat Boy, but it's never been something I've actually, I don't think even seen gameplay for. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's yeah, it's a one where you die a lot. It's one of them games. Oh, it's one of those. Uh, they call it a roguelite. <laughs> no, it's not one of them. Oh no. Okay. You. It's a like it's... puzzle game. You have to get through an area where there's like spinning wheels, and you're a little oh, meatball. Nice. nice. Short and stout. Oh, and then, like a like a little you... platformer. Yeah, a little platformer. Hey, game. cool. Yeah. Well, based off of Earthward Jim, you know. Oh. Wasn't that game also just hard as shit? <laughs> yeah. It's good times. Good times. All right, Zesty. That's what you got for you. One last Zesty, then it's night night forever. The YOLO Zesty. Mm. I'd rather Their naming not. conventions suck. I was going to say Ironfly, too. Like, it doesn't quite... Oh, pardon me. It, it doesn't quite sound like something... That has much of a story behind it. And but Leg AL has it. a fly. The what? Leg AL. Oh, the French well, brand. Yeah, but yeah, I'm just... ju- I'm arguing from their perspective. It's a bad argument. Yeah. yeah, that's because that's one of the plagues. <laughs> when I hear Iron Fly, I just think uh, Spider Fly. <laughs> I think of the <laughs> butterfly knife that Benchmade made or Benchmade uh, Spider Co made. Um. Or... Yeah, I think about like some sort of badass American-made balisong company. Yeah, Iron. like that sounds fucking cool. Brought shit. to you by <laughs> Orange County Choppers. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy from them if we could have sure butterfly knives. Also, that iron fly. I'm not saying it's necessarily too close of a one-to-one, but a, it's, a, it's an Azula-looking fly right there. It's a Zancudu looking. Thank you very much. Ah, there, there you go. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Get your SEs straight, sir. <laughs> does the Azula not have a fly on it? Or a little, a little, uh, little ant on it? Oh, it does have the logo. I was just the blade shape itself is. Oh no, you're right. <laughs> very reminiscent of a Zancudu. You're not wrong. Yeah, no, I was thinking just the logo. I wasn't even thinking about it that deep. <laughs> just I like, like I, I like it when people sue each other. So. That's where I always go, is is that blade shape looks the same as another blade shape, where they should probably just sue each other. Hell yeah. It's the right answer most of the time, I think. 
So uh, yeah, good times, good times. Uh, that's it for me. I got nothing. Same. I'm yeah. ending ending on a zesty note. I think that's a, that's a good that's a good place to leave it. Yep. It's a little guacamole. Oh. Salad. The guacamole is turning brown though. Uh. Didn't use enough lemon juice. That's it. Not, not enough zest. Enough. Yeah, exactly. It's... I'm zesting as hard as I can. Mm. I can't zest any faster, <laughs> Captain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that word means what you think it means. Um, I God, think, I hope it doesn't. I think you know what I think it means, and <laughs> and well, we better get off this stream before we dig a hole any deeper. To quote Ironfly, they were simple yet ambitious. Indeed. Wise words. Wise words from a strange, Zesty. strange Zesty. company. Yeah. Let's, Ambitious. Uh, let's thank people so I can go spread democracy. Do it. Um, we're doing it. I think it's nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I remember right. when we used to close out at like eight thirty. Thank you to the <laughs> Cutting Edge Cutlery Co. for bringing these bad boys in from Sierra KT. Ooh ha hee ha. Uh, I'm the CRKT person on the CRKT Homefront Compact. Check them out. Order them on the webinaries. Webinaries is also where you can find the Pokey Factor Instagram on the webinaries. Uh, you'll note it's not been updated, um, but that is specifically to uh, fight the algorithm. Um, yeah, I'm I'm staring into this. I did it on purpose. You'll never prove me wrong. There's not two years of me talking about how I'm going to post more. Shut up. <laughs> uh, low key, I'm actually terrified of posting anything explicitly knife related on my page. Yeah. <laughs> Having things mm. shut down. Yep. Anyway. But yeah, thank you to people that continue to come and follow us because uh, we're the only people that aren't shadow banned. So uh, even if we're just the default, uh, welcome. And uh, keep watching. In diddly. In diddly. Doodly too. Um, also, thank you to everyone who has and will continue to um, contribute to our Patreon. Uh, we're waiting just for product. And then we got the boxes all messaged up with the envelopes on them and the postages and the addresses and uh we just need something to put to, to put in in the boxes we, we could see. send you empty boxes but that seems kind of mean-spirited at this point <laughs> after all these years of false promises to that does give seem you an super on point <laughs> a little on the nose we should just give the empty box in preparation we're, for the actual box coming we'll go out and we'll find some coal and we'll fill the boxes <laughs> You're talking about find some coal. Just Christmas. Break that piece of coal into five pieces. There you go. Send gotta it be, out. Gotta be frugal about this shit. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. I know where there's some coal. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Great Blaine's house. Okay. That's what you want to do is raid a Viking. Uh, yeah. Of course, they never see it coming. See? They're That's out raiding. exactly where I was going. Yeah. yeah. It's like the bling ring. Get them while they're out of town. All right, gentlemen. Uh, we're back here again next week. Same bad time, same bad too. Good gracious. I think we're all in the same boat at this point. Nine o'clock. Whoever you as well. Yeah. Caffeine is failing me. Because it is the night. So, um, yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. We will see you back here again next week, 7.15 Mountain Standard Time. I think that's what we're working with right now. I don't know. Stupid daylight. Anyway. Uh, yeah. It's it's mountain time either way. It's mountain. It's the mountainiest of times. Indeed. So Mountain time all the time. Thanks for joining us again here, guys. We will see you all again next week. I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. I am the Iron Joe. And I'm exile.ca. And we're signing off of our excellent connection. Good night, folks. Excellently. We made it through a whole stream not 
I dropped frame, not a nothing. Look at us go. Excellent. And I think we were even on time, too, weren't we? No. 